Live, 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 Cricket Sadist Hour, we have with us two of the uh, most alert, I would say, um, cricket commentators in the business. <laughs> we have Ian O'Brien, who's tucked his shirt just, just outside of his sweater to look a little bit like Jonathan Agnew today, and Mark Butcher, who yesterday was dressing as Richie Benno. How are we, gentlemen? Yeah, very good. Ah, splendid. <laughs> very well. I'm going to start with you, IOB. Are you? Is there still vomit? Is that is that the problem? Is there vomit down your shirt uh, from yesterday's performance? Is that why you put the, the sweater on? Yeah, I was a little bit chilly in the office this morning. Um, if you want to talk some cricket as opposed to fashion, then um, then you come to the right place. Um, it yeah, it like hurts it. a bit. It hurts a bit yesterday. Um, it it it. it uh, yeah, to see them fall over inside sort of two hours is um, uh, it's yeah it's it's not hard to take because it's been done before and I've and I've been a part of a team that's been uh, that's been wiped aside uh, uh, a bit like that. Um, there's some class bowling um, and some uh, some timid batting, uh, which I didn't think I was uh, I was going to have to talk about quite so soon, and um, it's uh, yeah it's sad to see. Uh, after they bowled England out, what were you thinking at that point, though? You had to be... I know you're a New Zealander, so you're only ever going to be so optimistic, but, you know, as a New Zealander, you must have been about 70 80% optimistic. It was a chaseable target. Yeah, look, I, I said all day on, uh, on on day three, if New Zealand can hold them to 240 uh, lead, uh, a 240 run chase for me was um, uh, was gettable. Any more than 240, and I, and I mean 250, and I, I mean just a little bit more, anything more... Was, um, was going to have a hope on, on chasing down. Little did I realise that uh, yeah, a hundred would have been enough. Um, I, I, I was quite optimistic. Yeah, I, I really was. I knew that. Uh, look, I, I did know the England bowlers were going to get better and better, uh, and, and the pitch has helped. Uh, the pitch was a fantastic test wicket. I really enjoyed it. Uh, just another uh, another one to add to the to, to the list of good test wickets around the world in terms of it's it's either flat or bouncy or it does a bit of the you know it, ch it changes through the game and I, I like that. Um, but I thought two forty was all right. Well, two uh, yeah, it turned out any score would have been okay. Um, I think England could have defended thirty five realistically. <laughs> but Mark, um, I mean, what you you were. Uh, you know, you were IPLing yesterday, so you were probably watching it out of the corner of your eye while you were trying to watch another game. But yeah, uh, wasn't it wasn't it over before the IPL started? It was it was over. It was over whilst the um, the Pune Warriors Delhi Daredevils um, wooden spoon match was on. So I have to confess that I might have it might have been more than just out of the corner of my eye that I was watching the Test match. We we won't tell um, we won't tell ITV that that no, happened. Don't tell. But. Well, I mean, you know, 228, I, I would have thought that England should have been able to defend that anyway. I mean, there hadn't been a high-scoring game. The yeah. pitch had deteriorated a little bit. There was obviously spin was going to be an option, um, but also there was a lot of there was a bit of seam movement um, happening, and, and you couple that with a little bit of swing that had been going on throughout the whole game. Were you? How confident were you of 228? Oh, very. But, I mean, just simply because, I mean, first of all, um, hats off to Tim Southey for his temper. Um, you know, great performance in a in a ultimately in a losing cause. But the way that he had the ball talking on uh, on Sunday morning kind of led me to believe that if he was able to do it, then England would certainly be able to do it. Um, and if you look at the if you look at the game, I think somebody somebody tweeted yesterday, and I, I can't remember who it was, so I apologise for stealing your stats. But in the first innings of the match, it was it was something like a collapse was six for six for sixty. In the second inning of the match, it was 7 for 60. In the third innings of the match, it was 8 for 60. And this time, it was 10 for 60. So, I mean, it just, it just the pitch seemed to, to get more fruity. Um, there was more happening uh, as the game went on. And, um, you know, I, I, for one, was, was surprised on day one. I was at Lords on day one. That having chosen to bat England were quite as timid as they were in terms of their their scoring rate, but it's it's been totally vindicated because as the game went on, it became increasingly difficult to score at all. So um, hats off to England; they got their, their tactics right. Broad and Anderson were were irresistible, and um, and also hats off to Joe Root, who I thought played two incredibly mature innings in um, you know in what was a, a bowler's test match for sure. 
Yeah. Well, I agree. Well, that's, I mean, it's, it's a basic problem that New Zealand have. Every time a New Zealand bowler did well, all I could think of was England's bowlers are slightly better. Um, yeah. You know, a- anything that Southie can do, Anderson is slightly better at. Uh, and then you've got Broad and Finn who are a little bit quicker. Um, you, you've got, especially when Williamson was bowling well. I mean, Swan didn't end up, you know, being a factor. But the better Williamson bowled, surely the more worried New Zealand batsmen got about facing him. And that's the problem, isn't it? Everything that, that New Zealand have, England just have a couple of steps higher. Uh, and, and 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 I don't mind that. I don't mind the fact that you've just compared Saudi to. Anderson, you know, I think that's that's great for Saudi, and I I think he was uh, he was brilliant, and and I really enjoyed watching him uh, go about his work, uh, and I enjoyed watching him enjoy his own success as well. That that's a really nice thing to see. He doesn't typically celebrate a lot uh, in terms of his wickets. He's he sort of downplays a lot of things, uh, but yesterday you could really see that he was into it. Um, a lords, I'm sure. B on his board, I'm sure. Uh, and C, also getting your team into a position that can win. Um, and, and, and I think they were three things that really uh, swamped him almost, and, and he just became a different character out there in the middle, and I, I enjoyed that, um, and it was it was really good. But, yeah, absolutely, uh, everything that, that New Zealand's got, England have that little bit better. Um, and that's why we're eighth, and that's why you guys are second. And, 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 and I, don't mind, I don't mind the fact that we got wiped off the park for what we did yesterday. Um, that is a little bit, a testament of, of how New Zealand have, we've, we play a bit of test cricket. We compete and dictate for, for large periods and then fall over in an hour um, and lose a test match in an hour, and that happens so often. Um, look, the, the extra pace of, of Broad yesterday was, uh, was our downfall. The, the, the movement we, we, we could handle, but that pace just got hands away from bodies. Um, it just, you saw um, Fulton and um, just, that's the sound effect. Um, the hands just get dragged away from your body with, with that extra pace. Um, and and, and that's, that sums up the, you know, yesterday's innings. It moved around. There's a few unplayable deliveries, same as Rutherford with two in the match. Um, yeah, England have just got every player. It's just that little bit better than, than the New Zealand players. Um, and eventually that, that sort of rises to the top, doesn't it? I mean, Broad was, it was a phenomenal effort, the way he, he basically, his best spells are often when he doesn't do that much with the ball, because it wasn't like it was jagging, I mean, compared to Anderson, Anderson bowled an in-swinger that, you know, I mean, it looked like a missile, uh, that in-swinger, I, I, I dreamed about it all night, it was, you know, the best dreams I've ever <laughs> You're had. You're a sad man, J-Rod. I am, I am, I'm <laughs> sort of glad I wasn't facing it, in my dreams I was bowling it, which is which <laughs> weird because I was leggy, but, um, yeah. I, it was it was an amazing it was an amazing you know movement. Whereas Broad was only moving things a little bit. And I sometimes I think that he he struggles for so much, but when he can just get a little bit of movement, Mark, he's just quick enough, you know, to yeah. to beat people uh, with a little bit of movement. Yeah, well, I mean, he's tall as well, isn't he? Um, and, and and which is why getting his length right is so important because um, he's not you know he's not sort of Ambrose quick, so. The shorter stuff isn't always quite as, as as effective. In fact, very rarely is it effective. But when he gets his length right, and when he's when he's attacking the stumps or the top of the stumps, um, he's pretty difficult to play. And and he has these sort of purple spells where um, you know where he knocks Thought people over for nothing. He did it, huh? Sort of the colour of your shirt spells. Yeah, well, maybe maybe just a little bit a little bit darker, a little bit more a little bit more sexy than that. <laughs> But um, you know, he did it against Australia at the you know the Oval of all places in 2009. You know, with 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 minimal movement but with great length. And I think that the thing for Stuart, and I'm sure there are there are people far better qualified than me to talk about his bowling action. I I always feel when watching him that he gives that he makes it difficult for himself because of the way in which his his left side, his left arm, kind of disappears off towards cover point, mm-hmm. which means that that. On the days where it's off, it's probably something to do with with speed. He has to hit the he has to hit the crease at the absolute perfect speed and momentum in order to make everything go in a straight line and be able to control his length. The second that's off, the second he arrives a bit too quick or a little bit too slow, that left hand side disappearing off towards cover point means that he's always really struggling to sort of search out and find a, a consistent line and length. 
So you know, when he when he gets it right, it's incredible because you know we've seen him do it to to, to many many teams and many batting sides that are that are better than New Zealand. But we've also seen him bowl an absolute pile of dross, and and he kind of can do the same thing in the same match, you know. Mm. Um, and that's a real challenge for for Stewart in his career, and a real challenge for the for England's kind of bowling staff and technical staff to try and find a way of overcoming that particular um, flaw that he has in his in his action. IB, since you are our um, fast bowling expert as a former medium pacer, uh, is Butch right? Is is that the pro- is it a technical problem? I also th- also think sometimes with Broad it's a bit of a mental problem. He's such an experimenter and he's always trying to outthink people that he sometimes he forgets that he's six foot five and he bowls quick. Well, this is a, I'll come to the um, to the technical bit in a second, but first the head bit is uh, just bowl and 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 exactly right you. you you say he looks like he thinks about it too much, and that probably is the point. Just bowl, big boy, um, and that is the, that is the best thing you can do. Bowl dumb. Just go about your business. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Do not think too much. Do not try too much, uh, and just keep producing uh, quality deliveries. Back on the technical front, Butch spot on with his front, uh, with his, with his left side, that front arm, it heads out towards cover, um, and quite often it takes his head and his body with him. And that's when he has the bad day. When he's still following through down down the wicket, he, he'll have a good day. That's when his timing's his timing's spot on. Mm. Um, but that front arm, as it just opens out and pulls pulls a long way away from uh, from down the center of the uh, you know towards from the target, um, it drags it drags a lot of him away. And then you just don't have the the biomechanics. You don't have the timing um, when, when that goes so far awry. And it is, you know, we're talking, we're talking this much, and uh, um, in, in exactly, you know, being forward or back, you know, fast or too slow in your run up, uh, it just looked like yesterday, and and yeah, like the spells, um, Jared, you, you you listed, and especially that one at, at the oval, it was just where has this come from? Uh, literally, he's gone up a gear, a, a, a yard, not quite the two or three yards or three or four yards that that Breezy's got back, um, but uh, but. But he's gone up that, uh, he goes up that yard of pace. Um, but also when he goes up that yard of pace, his length just becomes just so... Perfect. It's perfect, isn't it? It is perfect. It's absolutely yeah. perfect. Yeah. But to, to repeat that is so difficult because of his action. Um, but when he gets it right, because of his action, it is, it is amazing. Um, yeah, that's something he's going to work with. That's something he's going to work a lot with. But the thing is, though, you know, he's... He's played fifty six tests. You know, it's not like he's um, it's not like he's a twenty test guy. He's still sort of finding his way through. He's played fifty six tests. He is only um, twenty six though, which is something that we sort of forget because he's been around for so long. And you know, I mean, he he we just he's just been on the scene. And so sometimes you think you know that this guy's you know heading towards you know thirty or thirty one, and he should be in the prime of his life. But realistically, he may be another one or two years across from being yeah. at his smartest as a bowler. Mate, it's not. This isn't. This isn't sort of like a, a demolition of him either, because it's you know it, it, he is a he is an incredibly good bowler. Oh, um, we just. I think we're just. What we're just saying is is that that perhaps people don't quite understand, or it's difficult for people to understand how you go from sort of looking very ordinary and running in and bang it in halfway down to bowling magnificently. That you know two days later, um, and it's not. You know, I think one of the things. Um, when I'm doing commentary, that you have to, that you always have to keep reminding yourself is, is that these these players aren't stupid. They're not running up and doing the wrong thing on purpose because Wait they don't know any better. You've not been following yeah. David Warner's Twitter feed. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's that's another story entirely. But um, you know, they, the, the players know, you know, Stuart Broadball know that he that on on the first day or you know at su- at certain points in New Zealand or wherever or in India he was he was too short things weren't going right because the ball keeps disappearing for four you know it's you know it's not right but the trick is being able to being able to produce um, the best of your action the best of your uh, of your ability on the stage now that's, that's, the div- that's the difficult bit it's not it's not you know, he's not an idiot. He doesn't. He he knows that running up, bowling it halfway down, and getting cut for four is is bad. You know, <laughs> so he's not doing that on purpose. Um, so yeah, it's just you know, it's a question of looking at blind. Imagine if imagine if he was able to do that. You know, if the action and and, and everything else and his rhythm was that good over a, you know a, over a, a four matches out of five in the Ashes. I mean, boy, he's going to take some wickets then. And the, and the and the thing is, is that when you're bowling like that, your body doesn't hurt. 
When everything mm -hmm. is, is in sync, you can bowl long spells and your body doesn't hurt. When you're bowling poorly, your body hurts mm -hmm. and, and you get really tired. A, your head's ticking, you're thinking, what am I doing? Why am I here? I shouldn't be here when, it, when it's going horribly wrong. Um, but, but when you've got the rhythm, and, and, and you're not going to take seven for forty odd without having you know something about you in, in, in the day. When you've got that, you just go. He bowled eleven overs, lunch in the middle, um, sure. Um, but it's um, you just want you know in that situation where you know I'll keep going, skip because this isn't this isn't hurting me right now. I'm I'm loving this, and, I'm, and I guarantee you today all he will have is a sore head. Uh, he won't have a sore <laughs> body. <laughs> he won't have a sore body after after bowling. Um, Bowling that spell, it's only 11 overs, sure, but it, it wouldn't have hurt him. And the, you know, the other days that oh, you just want to hold on to, and, and uh, you know, when you're hitting the ball, you know, hitting the ball well, Butch. That you know, those days, it's like, what is it today that is making me just so ready to hit a ball or you know, to to fire it down there at 90 mile an hour? What is it today that really is just working? Mm. Uh, to, it's all uh, bodies. Let's talk about sore bodies because other than the fact that almost every Kiwi batsman was hitting the balls at one stage or another during the match, uh, we also had we also had BJ Watling getting injured and then um, our favourite, the Bruce Martin equation. Uh, he's no longer an equation. He's been solved for this series at least. Um, <laughs> That's like a we, Dan Brown book now. <laughs> so uh, we've got a possibility, I'm just looking at my notes, of... Luke Ronke, Dan Vittori, uh, is it Latham, the other backup wicketkeeper? Tom Latham, yeah. Yeah, Tom Latham. Is Tom Latham a full-time wicketkeeper? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think he was. No, nor was BJ Watling, but, you know, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, normally tour with, we normally tour with three uh, number one keepers. Um, so this, this is new to us, uh, touring with, uh, with, with none, in essence. <laughs> well, I'm going to throw this out to you, though, um, OB. So you've got a situation here where your captain has done very well captaincy-wise. I mean, I thought he did very well with the field. Uh, he, got a, he, lot of, he got a lot of good press, I mean, uh, from, from the way that he played the game. Unfortunately, he didn't really make many runs, and uh, the team ended up getting smashed at the end. He's taken the gloves. Um, he's got one test left. I know he's retired from uh, test wicket keeping, but I'm assuming he can still physically do it because he looked like he was keeping okay to me. Uh, is it worth for that one test just to go, forget Ronke, let's uh, strengthen the side, let's bring Vittori in, you know, um, and let's bring... Is, is Dan, is he fit, Dan? Well, Dan, Dan, Dan's been in uh, with, with RCB during the, during the T20. Yeah, he hasn't uh, played though, has he? He hasn't played, no, of course not. Uh, he's great on the bench. He he is flying into the country, um, and and he's not too far away. Um, originally due here twenty second, but will now be here earlier. Uh, Why I, is he coming earlier? Because <laughs> RCB has been knocked out of the competition, China. Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> remember the IPL, that other game of cricket that's going on. <laughs> um, the 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 thing is, um, I don't think he'll play. Oh, I don't. I don't think he uh, can go from not playing any T Twenty. Um, to then having to stand around a field uh, for for maybe on a you know a, in a bad thing you know two days I'm not sure he'd to be able to uh, do that uh, it's nice it's a nice thought uh, but I don't think they'll do it and, and if and if Bruce Martin can't play it will just be simple play four seamers what about the wicket keeper though yeah that's um, I don't I don't think B J Watt which is fine but from all accounts uh, they. Thoughts, maybe a patella fracture. Uh, oh, he was going through. Uh, the scans reveal uh, no patella fracture. Uh, bang in a pretty decent whack. So, um, you know, the whole ice and, and rest and, and and rehab stuff. I think he'll play. Um, you know, I got the I got Bruce Martin not playing the first test role. Uh, but I think uh, B.J. Watling will play. I don't think he'll uh, have too many issues. It's not not an easy injury, though, is it? I mean, uh, ha having been a backup wicketkeeper in my life, if you've got even a slightly sore knee and you've just you've just got to bend it over and over again, like if there is any sort of any ligament damage there at all, uh, he's going to find out halfway through um, England's innings, especially if England can bat long and a painkillers. That's what these are for, mate. That's what these yeah. harden up for. <laughs> I think they were tic tacs that you were holding up there, but um. Oh, uh, these are the big bad boys. These are the big, the big, the big pink ones. Don't worry about that. Oh, they're not the, not the VJ Singh ones then. 
<laughs> They're not deer felt or something. I don't know. <laughs> look at me. Do I look like I turn? <laughs> uh, let's talk about roots a little bit, Butch. Um, yeah. I've been on, on, especially on Switch here, like basically saying that I see him as a 10-year player. Um, I think his technique works, and I think the way that he plays his cricket is amazing. And I just think that there are very few young players that come in with any sort of composure, let alone what he's done uh, pretty much every step of his career. And I thought his, his innings, he was a bit unlucky to go out, but I thought his innings was amazing in, in, the, in the context of this match. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, mature is the, the uh, is the word that I'd use. I mean, you know, he's he's an opener. Um, Joe Root opens the batting for for Yorkshire and, and was averaging two hundred, I think, before this Test match started. Uh, he's, you know, he's in pretty decent nick. Um, his dismissal in the in the second innings, I think his weight just got caught a little bit back and he he didn't quite get forward at it, um, so it nipped back through the batting pad. But up until that moment, he hadn't looked in any difficulty whatsoever for his seventy, and that was batting at four. So he's looked good at six. He's looked good at four. He's going to look pretty good when he eventually gets around to batting and the place that he does for a living, which is opening the batting. Um, I you know, I've, I've made no, I've made no secret of the fact that that um, despite having a lot of respect for for Nick Compton and his, his run scoring ability and his the way that he's sort of come again as a as a player. Um, in first class cricket and, and eventually got up to test level but I, I still I still maintain that I wouldn't have picked him to play in India um, and that uh, and that, that Joe Root would have been opening the batting for me in New Zealand on the last trip and will be opening the batting for me in uh, in the Ashes yeah but um, you can't argue Butch that yeah. um, Joe uh, you know Nick Compton looks a lot better topless than Joe Root <laughs> You know, if they're going to do some sort of Ashes calendar coming out this year, that's going to be a quite important thing. Um, yeah, you're ab you're absolutely right. But I, but I'll tell you another thing that um, that Nick Compton's sort of he has his he has his sort of his demons and his difficulties, particularly technically. Um, and that if you if you <laughs> put put it this way, if you were to split screen and match up um, Joe Root's ten innings in Test match cricket so far and stick them next to Nick Compton's. Um, you know, and then ask uh, an alien from out of space which which one of these guys is you know has been a, a ten year, twelve year first class cricketer, and which one is a, is a newbie. Um, I reckon Joe Root would probably get the uh, probably get the vote as the ten year right player. If it's, if it's an alien, but if it's Predator, I think um, Predator would prefer Compton because he's a little bit more stacked. There's a bit um, more on him. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit 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 more of a challenge for him to to rip the spine out and hang it on a tree. Yeah, right. I'm with you. Aliens yeah, but, you know, this, look, it's just my this is just my opinion. It's my personal opinion. I've I've had it since since the tour was picked for India. I didn't see the point in playing a sort of like a a, a stodgy regular opener in India. I thought they could would have done better trying to trying to crack on a bit. As it happened, they won the series. So what do I know? Um, but, it, but they won the but they won the series. But the fact they won the series wasn't because Nick Compton opened the batting, you know. <laughs> um, and he did. And then, of course, you know, hats off to him. He scores the two hundreds in the bounce on the bounce in in New Zealand. Um, but he now looks like a fish out of water all over again. And uh, and you've got but, this, but you've got this kid who is a, who is an opener who is going to be a, a ten year, twelve year, you know, perhaps you know, perhaps longer England player. Um, yeah. And for me, he's the he's he's the guy. But there you go. But they picked him though, Butch, because they picked role players, and they were trying. They want that top three to be, you know, the blunting of the new ball, which is what Compton does. The problem is that Compton doesn't quite have, you know, the ability maybe to step to the next level that that say Strauss had, where Strauss could hit, still hit boundaries, and you know, still move the score on. And uh, you know, it's very similar situation to what Australia have with Eddie Cowan, whereas they're both very much, you know, the sort of new new uh, opening batsman who can blunt a new ball. But whether they can take you to the next level all the time, every time Compton or Cowan fail, even if the innings before they've been successful, uh, there will be someone saying that they're on their way out. Yeah. Who? Well, who would you who would you replace Ed Cowan with? Uh, why wouldn't I? I mean, I would keep him there and open with Rogers as well. Right. But, uh, that, okay. Well, the, I mean, there, there you have it. That's team. that's that's fine. There is there aren't you know. I, but I, I think when you've got when you've got somebody that you think is going to be the future of your batting yeah. waiting there to do his job, then then it becomes less straightforward. If there were no if there were no options, then okay, compo he plays until until such a time. But I just think it's I think it, I think it's just unnecessarily holding back um, a team that is you know that that is 
has aspirations of being you know the best side in the world you know you kind of it depends on what your on what your final outcome is do you want do you want to be a side that's you know hard to beat and battles hard and all that kind of stuff or do you want to be a team that's going to go out there and dictate and and win test matches and i think there is less likelihood of that happening um, with Compton at the top of the order, with Cook and with with Trot batting at number three, then there might be with Joe Root doing his doing the job that he does for a living, surely, which is open. Surely, though, the, the the plan is to is to blood him at five, four when Bell is, is sick, and then <laughs> and then have him pop up the order when he's played ten, twelve tests. Surely, uh, in, in terms of in terms of seeing kids. Um, you know, 22 year olds perform at, at test level, and we're not talking against. He's not coming in against Bangladesh and, and Zimbabwe. Mm. Um, you know, he's coming against some, some pretty decent bowling attacks uh, already. Um, surely, a, a nice, comfortable uh, position where where he knows his role. I mean, I think I think this with opening bowlers and opening batsmen, it can be quite hard to work out your role in terms of do I tick it over? Are we ticking it? Are we are we just blunting? Uh, whereas when you're in the middle order, um, it's been set out. We've either lost three quick wickets, or she, you know, sheesh, we need to we need to consolidate here, or, or we're 140 for three, um, 240 for three, and I've got some freedom. Um, I, I'd like to see him spend a little bit more time uh, down the order, and then and then yeah, obviously he's um, he's a very good player, and uh, I really enjoy watching him play, and I think he will have a lot of success at the top. But I, I really do think it's a succession plan. It's a yeah. um, it's a blooding if you like. I can see that. I can I can definitely see that. But the only the only thing is is that you know you go from it's so different batting at, at opening to batting at six that you give him he gets his ten ten test matches or fifteen mm -hmm. test matches under his belt as a number six and then all of a sudden he goes up to to open the batting and and it's like well is it another ten test matches now while well, he gets used to that yeah, yeah. so. Um, but I just think he's good enough. I think that's I think that's the point. I don't, I'm not too I'm not too fussed about giving him a chance to get used to it. He he wandered in you know in India, um, played two fantastic knocks in his first test. Um, he's now played two of the best best innings in the test match um, on a on a difficult pitch at, at Lords. In terms of knowing what his role is, I mean as an opener, it's pretty much straightforward. You go out there and you and you and you assess it and you you let the ball go and and you and you build an innings. You know that's that's it's a you assess it, um, and, yeah. and does, does he have the ability to assess it and, and, and compute, and then and then it, and, and then be able to execute um, that <laughs> game plan? Well, uh, you know, I mean, he's at like I said, he's a bit early April start to the championship season. Um, he's made two scores in excess of two hundred. His lowest score was one hundred and seventy-five. I think he's computing pretty well at the moment. Got found out a little bit in New Zealand though, Butch, and and, I, and I'm not I'm not coming back at you with, with stats. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm just yeah. in terms of his development, uh, got yeah. found out a bit in New Zealand, um, but he's come back better. Yeah. Right. Well, okay, yeah. here we go. Hyper hypothetically, mm. hypothetically, you're playing at Headingley, and the first over is a maiden from Bolt, and you're coming up into the wind because that's your role, uh, and you're bowling. If you've got the ball in your hand, are you more confident of getting Compton out than you are of Root? Yeah, of course. Well, well. <laughs> No. <laughs> well, there you have it. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm pretty sure I can keep Compton quiet all day long. Um, don't worry about that. Um, but but I, I actually I actually think I could get Root out. Um, I think Compton's a little bit uh, more comfier. If you're talking about with my lengths, then Root would be with with the lengths that I bowl. So, um, but Compton wouldn't score either. So I think I'd do alright against them both. Thanks. <laughs> Hell, <hell> now. <laughs> Well, let's finish there with um, I, uh, with OB finally, you know, um, sounding positive. And it hasn't been, you know, a good couple of days for New Zealand. Other than Jeremy Coney's dress sense, they've been a pretty poor side. Uh, we'll come back and we will speak to you guys after the next test. Thank you very much.